let's be honest, no one is interested in what Megan is up to, or what Harry is up to, if they have absolutely no connection to the royal family. They might talk to them or invite them to the talk shows out of pity, or a goodwill gesture, but that's how far they will go in the entertainment industry. Meanwhile, right after the coronation, William and Kate would be busy meeting the world leaders and stepping up their game. You can already feel the shift in the hierarchy. The latest event and the uptight security of William and Kate are proof of it. They definitely hold a lot of power now, and this must be crushing Megan's ego. If only she could stick around till coronation, then she might have found herself searching through the tiaras and the ivory gown. All they had to do was shut up and garner some goodwill with their service. Let's be honest, had she stayed for at least five years and performed her duties religiously, then the public would still have been sympathetic. But she really came with an agenda and a tight deadline, it seems. She wanted everything all at once and immediately, with no questions asked. Now, no matter how many times she asks for an audience with Charles, or does all those PR attacks, she better be fearful of the power that William holds. The responsibility lies on William now to protect his future reign and try his best to leave a legacy behind. People absolutely love William and Kate, and gone are the days where Meghan can publicly shame Kate and get away with it. Post-coronation, the tightening and leaks would happen. Charles believes in the sustainability of the royal family, and we all know how much focus he pays to the future of the monarchy. For those of you worrying about the titles and the future of the duo, then rest assured, but I feel like the work has already started behind doors. Both Meghan and Harry know this, that their days are outnumbered. It's no longer in Meghan's favor to say no or put demands. If she wanted, she would have done everything in her power to stop Harry from attending the coronation, but it's neither in her nor Harry's hands. The royal family showed the world who's in charge, and it's definitely not Meghan. And this is just the beginning. Don't be surprised if they show up at Balmoral with kids to meet Charles, but it's up to Buckingham Palace how much they want to interact with Meghan. But from my intuition, Charles wants to keep them both overseas. But Harry would always be mentioned from a distance, bring harm to him, and Meghan would pay for it kind of a situation from the royal family. As much as we all hate Harry for what he's done, as long as Charles is the king, they won't simply discard Harry and throw him to the wolves. But yeah, I am looking forward to this power dynamic and the recent shift in the hierarchy. William and Kate are in a perfect position to call shots, and they have got three kids to keep the royal watchers busy. Meghan can't top that no matter how hard she tries with her kids. The thing is that the Americans won't care much, and it would only be the British media to sort of mention their kids, or the new photos that they might release in the future. But from the current coronation fever, I hardly feel the absence of Meghan. It almost feels like she never existed. People have this expectation that Charles disowns his own son or casts him aside. That's not going to happen, and a good parent would never do something like that. It has nothing to do with his being a softy. Harry is his own son. William, being a father himself, would not counsel his father to disown or disregard his brother. At the end of the day, whatever Harry has said about his family, it is up to his family to address it and work through it with him. It's not really anyone else's business. Families have falling outs. They fight. They argue. I mean, William didn't speak to his father for a long time. No one was out there demanding Charles disown him. And William is known to have a very, very bad temper and has apparently blown up at his father in the past. And over the years, and yes, it's taken years, they managed to work through a lot of their issues. His relationship with Harry will probably follow a similar trajectory. Big explosion, much said and done to cause harm and hurt, but eventually he will probably make up with Harry, much like he did with William. Their family dynamic was screwed up with to begin with, given the circumstances. They aren't a normal family. And if you think Anne would disown either of her kids if they did something as Harry did, 
then you'd probably be, mis be mistaken. She adores her children. Charles is no different when it comes to his sons. If Charles responded to Harry's bombs, it would simply make everything worse. If this is how Harry feels or felt he was perceived in his family, then that is for Charles to sort out with him, and with time they will probably work things out. The public shouldn't involve themselves in that process. They shouldn't make demands. At the end of the day, Harry left the family business with the slimmed down monarchy. The processes involved with future events will simply mean that those who don't work for the firm don't get balcony spots and won't play a role in state affairs. One commenter said, This is the problem. Really, though, I have no idea what will make Meghan shut up. I don't think anything will be long term. She wants to be famous and isn't going to settle for infamous. Obviously, she's way too far gone to turn that around now. But there will probably be some interesting stunts. I don't know how the whole marriage and visa thing are going to work out. If they've gotten all the money they're going to get from Charles, then it'll be interesting to see when they start to get really desperate. I can only see the family paying for rehab in the UK for a divorce. But William, I honestly hope he tells Harry to fuck off for the rest of his life. William has been taking care of Harold's dumbass for almost 40 years now. The man deserves his break. I have read that Meghan had an agenda, but it was to take down the royal family. She was paid to go after the weakest link, Harry, which didn't take much effort, as rumors are she was a popular yacht girl. She put on the act and love-bombed him, and I think that is why she looked so smug at the wedding. Prince of Canada was just getting on the roller coaster, and it won't end until they divorce and his family gets him real therapy. She had no intention of being any help to the RF, and on almost every occasion she did the opposite. The Queen said as a divorced woman she was told not to wear a veil, but of course she did. The Queen made it known that the off-the-shoulder dress that Meghan wore on the balcony was too low on the shoulders at the next appearance she took it over the edge. The next appearance where she was sitting right next to TQ in the white dress with the oversized shoulder design was a big F.U. to the Queen. Since the previous dress was too low cut on top, she had this dress top oversized to push it in the Queen's face so that she can wear anything she wants and the Queen's opinion doesn't matter. Someone studied the outfits of Wallace and Princess Diana because both women caused many problems for the Queen and Meghan loved shoving it in her face. What do you think about the low status of Harry and Meghan at the moment? Let us know your thoughts below in the comment section. We hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this newsletter. See you in the next videos. Goodbye.